Folks, hello and welcome to Tavern Chat. I am your host, your bartender in the OSR, Eric Tenkar. And what do I have up on the screen? What the hell is Remoricon? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But there's a reason why now, I did this last year, like in October or November. And I was, <clears throat> you know, was a joke, right? I, everybody's like, oh, yeah, I know they moved TSRCon to the same weekend as GaryCon. But really, they're saying they're a separate con. They're not, they're not trying to, to leech off of or feed off of GaryCon. So, hey, seminars. We've seen no announcement of any seminars. Just so you know, the con launched today. 24th, right? Starting March 24th. Um, dealers. I know no reports of any dealers. Auctions. I know no reports of any auctions. Celebrity guests. Ernie and Ernie and Duck Rorty run games at the convention. Right? At the Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum. I don't think they could be considered celebrity guests. But more miniatures. Okay. More tournaments. I've seen no tournaments announced. More fantasy RPGs. Okay. More board games. More and more and more and more and more. The nation's primordial convention, uh, gaming convention, which, again, I don't know if they know what that means. But so now let's look at this flyer real quickly. OSR Games. That's owned by Justin Lanasa. Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum. That's owned by Justin Lanasa. TSR, the Game Wizards. Well, that's owned by Justin Lanasa. Uh, what else? Oh, Wizard Tower Games. Yeah, they're no longer associated. Uh, Smuggler's Coffee, they're no longer associated. Now, there's a newer flyer that would make this one a little bit less relevant. It's supposedly going to be uh, somebody selling spices. So, I mean, that's what I go to a gaming convention for. I go to get my cooking spices because, you know, it's the halfling in me. And I'm, I'm joking because I do enjoy my cooking spices. But, again, I'm not going to GaryCon or North Texas or Game Hole or, or ShireCon looking to get um, spices for my cooking. Just not really relevant to what I would think it would be. So, why is this important? Well, Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum earlier today posted that you can get a $1 off general admission, $20 off gaming with a Gary Khan badge. So you tell me that they're not leeching off of Gary Khan. Now, now before somebody goes, uh, who the fuck gives a flying fuck with about a $1 general admission discount? Here's the deal. This is how it works at the Dungeon Hobby Shop slash TSRCon slash Ramoracon. You pay $5 for each day. That's not bad, right? What does your $5 give you? It gives you admission to the Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum. So your $5 is now $4. $20 off gaming with a Gary Con badge. Well, that might be impressive, except for the fact that playing with uh, Ernie or Duck is 100 bucks. So now it's down to 80 You want to play with uh, Justin Lanasa? Or Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson is going to be launching uh, Star Frontiers tomorrow, folks. Uh, and, and there was a bonus with the Star Frontiers game, uh, Exposure to COVID. So if you have not gotten your COVID exposure yet and you're looking to build up immunity, um, this will be the place to be. Uh, again, no mask. And that's fine. I am anti-mask. That's why I'm not going to a lot of conventions in the last... Uh, oh, I mean, going to any conventions yet this year. Didn't go to TotalCon, didn't go to uh, GaryCon. I'd normally go to one or the other, if not both. But both had mask mandates, and I'm not spending my day wearing a mask. That's just me. I don't find it to be fun. Not for the expenses involved in these conventions. So going maskless is actually pretty good, especially right now, right, with our lower COVID rates. But Dave Johnson announced a week ago that they had COVID. So if they were positive for COVID a week ago, 
should they really be running games maskless with people, right? Even even the new guidelines would say you can go back to work after five days still require you to wear a mask for those next five days. And they encourage you to take 10 days if your job could give you 10 days. I don't I don't think TSR Com would give Dave uh, 10 days. Unless, of course, there's no Star Frontiers to be released. Wow, wouldn't that be interesting? I personally didn't even think they were going to have a con. Now, why would I think they weren't going to have a con? Well, scheduling events. Let's go to schedule events. I know it's small on the screen. I apologize. But here, we're going to just zoom in. Okay? And yeah, we're not going to know who's running the games if I zoom in this much. But on day one, the Dungeon Crawl game had one sign-up out of five slots. Okay. Jeff Leeson had one sign-up out of ten slots. By the way, the Dungeon Crawl game, I think, was $10. So you get to play, what, they pay you $10 if you're going to play the Dungeon Crawl game? I'd go for that. Pay me $10. I'll play for, I'll play for 15 minutes. I'll walk away. Uh, Jeff's game and Ernie's game. Uh, Jeff had one sign-up. Ernie had no sign-ups for today. Although, apparently, he might have had some people. But they weren't. Wearing, nobody was wearing a game badge. Nobody was wearing a con badge at the pictures I saw of uh, Ernie's game. Hey. Yeah, I'm not saying it was from a different day. Just saying it's what they posted. Um, Justin Lenas's game, I believe that was fifty dollars. He could play with Justin for thirty. There were absolutely no signups for Justin. Uh, Star Frontiers, that's tomorrow, right? Tomorrow, nine a.m. Be there at that fucking door, knocking on it, because you know how many slots are open. Don't, don't get upset now, okay? If you really want, remember they're gonna give you a free copy of Star Frontiers. If you play Star Frontiers, as long as you pay your 50 bucks, there's eight slots out of eight slots available. The numbers are just overwhelming. Um, Dungeon Crawl board game. Play with creators. I don't know which creators you're playing with because I'm pretty sure that uh, Wizard Tower Games is not going to uh, be at the con, but I could be wrong. All right. There's still three slots of five available. There's two signups for that. Actually, you know, the Dungeon Crawl board game is doing pretty well. Ernie's game tomorrow. Has six signups. That's pretty good, right? There's still four spots left. Now, if you paid a hundred bucks and some guy walks up at the door and he has to play for eighty, are you going to be upset? Do you want your twenty dollars back? I don't know. Good question, right? Boot Hill for Friday. Six slots available. Nobody signed up yet. Okay, Dungeon Crawl board game for Saturday. Five slots available. Five slots nobody signed up for. Mystery event, which could be anything, right? Mystery event. Well, that's exciting. Uh, no sign-ups. I'm going to sneeze. Excuse me. Hmm. Thank God for the uh, cough button. So, Boot Hill on Saturday. Uh, six slots available. No sign-ups. Ernie's game on Saturday. Uh, six slots available. No signs. I, I'm only allergic to TSR, it seems like. I'm going to sneeze again. Um, Starfleet Battles. Wow, that would be fun. Right? On Saturday. Guess what? Still six slots available out of six. Sunday only has one sign up. One person signed up for the Dungeon Crawl board game. Nobody signed up for the free game. Free games. My God. Free games and nobody wants free games. So, so how many people signed up? How many people signed up? Not to attend, but for actually play a game. That would be the question, right? Well, let's see. Four, five. And we go to the first page. Uh, at six, 11, 13, 14, 15 people. 15 people over the course of four days have signed up to actually play games. Now, not being a marketing guru like uh, others out there, this is how I would have handled this. Listen, we want people in, in, the, in the museum, right? Because we're going to sell shit in the museum. So why are we discounting the buck? Free admission. Everybody, free admission. Come. You, you, you know what? Yes, you've got your Gary Khan badge. You should be going to the Dungeon Hobby Shop 
we're waiving the admission for fee for anybody going to the convention because that's the kind of great people we are. That would be me. That would be my thought. Because once we get you in the store and the Dungeon Hobby Shop Museum is a retail environment, right? They're there to sell you shit. Once you get them in, then you sell shit or you pimp a game. Hey, listen, Ernie's game is starting up in 10 minutes. There's still slots available. But listen, we know free registration was $100, but we'll knock it down to, to, to 50 you know, because you're because you know, you got your Gary kind. We know you're here for Gary. Con this is kind of, it's almost like it's almost an insult to take a dollar off an admission, right? It's like, it's like, well, we, we need the popcorn money, man. We need the popcorn money. Like, what, what the fuck are you thinking? Literally, what the fuck are you thinking? I, I know, I, I know Justin listens, I know that. How do I know Justin listens? Because well, apparently he used Grammarly to edit products, which he can't do, dude. I'm sorry. I mean, but we did suggest that, that Justin use Grammarly for his uh, social media and online presence, which apparently he's been doing. So uh, two thumbs up to Justin uh, for listening to the advice that Bad Mike and myself have been given. And we also said, hey, put Ernie's name on everything. Now, I didn't, by the way, folks, I'll, I'll have to find a link to this elsewhere. I didn't have it ready, but uh, the Dungeon Crawl, uh, sorry, the Star Frontiers uh, game that uh, has an IS, uh, ISBN, whatever it is, you know, that those numbers that they give out, that it's the Library of Congress numbers or some shit like that. It has a number, right? And Google has this great thing about it now. This book's out there and it's being released. And the author, according to this, is E. Gary Gygax, not Ernie. It's the individual who passed away, what, uh, 14 years ago? How does that work? That's, that's what Google picked up. Now, is this being supplied by TSR? I don't know. But that's one hell of a fuck up. So I will include a link for that one. Maybe a follow-up tomorrow. We'll see. I'm sure there's going to be some in interesting information coming out of Ramora, I mean, uh, TSRCon, because you can only leak so much life, right? Man, this is this is awesome. This is good. This is entertaining. Uh, I'd like to see some more uh, photographs of people actually playing games in the con. I do have photos of people in the convention. Well, I shouldn't say in the museum, but since they're not wearing con badges, we don't know if they were there for the con. I don't know. But with the attendance to having, I guess people weren't really worried about wearing badges. Badges? Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. Just introduce yourself. Just introduce yourself. Make your own badge. I think Ken Whitman did that one year. Um, folks, as always, as always, I mentioned the world of COVID, right? We're still in that world of COVID. It's still out there. But restrictions are, are, are backing up. Heck, New York City's allowing athletes now to play. Home games. See, it doesn't apply to city workers, but you know, I guess it's a step. Um, use your common sense. All right. That's I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. Use your common sense. You're most likely a fucking adult. Use your common sense. Um, other than that, be safe, be well, God bless, roll those dice, and God willing, I'll be back again tomorrow night with a live stream at 8 p.m. With the miscreants from my regular game group. Yes, it's a random generated party live stream at 8 p.m. Eastern. Now, when I say God willing, there's a little bit of a... I got a procedure tomorrow morning. An angiogram. I should be home in plenty of time. But if not, uh, Joe the lawyer has uh, all authority and, and admin powers to run the stream yard. And to get that live stream going in case I lag. So... Hopefully, I will see you all tomorrow. All right, folks. On that note, I'm out of here. Latest.